Hello, Laura again. The orthodox scientific view since the end of the Second World War was, until a decade or two ago, that humanity was one species, with any observed differences between different populations or ethnic groups being purely cultural. In other words, the only difference between a Chinese person, a white European and a black African, lay in the different languages spoken or religions followed, that kind of thing. All physical differences, in skin colour, say, or the possession of an epicanthic eye fold seen in those of East Asian heritage, didn't have any bearing at all on character or intelligence. This was the original foundation for the idea of non-racism, uh, that in fact science did not support the idea of uh, racial differences. Since it has become possible to analyse our DNA in detail, though, that point of view has become quite untenable. The first modern humans to leave Africa and move into the Middle East and Europe, roughly 50,000 years ago, encountered another species already living there, the Neanderthals. Although there's uh, over the years a tradition grew up that the view of the Neanderthals is being semi-human brutes, uh, you know, half human, half ape. It's not true. The Neanderthals were very advanced. They were doing all kinds of things, and it's possible that the uh, modern humans that left Africa actually learned from the Neanderthals. In any case, Homo sapiens, modern humans, bred with the Neanderthals, and in the process they acquired some very useful genes, some relating among other things to brain size, architecture and function. One particular gene which 70% of Europeans and Asians have is a variation of microcephalin. This protects against a disorder of microcephaly and is connected with the growth and architecture of the brain. Babies with microcephaly are with heads much smaller than average. The outlook of such children in terms of life expectancy and intellectual ability is poor. The commonest cause of microcephaly is uh, genetic disorders. Another gene which helps the brain develop is a version of the ASPM gene. This is found in just a quarter of the world's population. In 2005, a researcher at the University of Chicago called Bruce Lamb found that these two variants of the genes had only been around in our species for 40,000 years and 6,000 years respectively. The humans who remained in Africa did not acquire these genes. They did, however, acquire genes from an earlier human species which was still living in Africa. Those in sub-Saharan Africa fall into three main groups, the Bantu, who we might think of as typical black Africans, the Pygmies, and the Khoisan, once known as Bushmen. Testing shows that although they lack the genes from the Neanderthals which Europeans acquired after leaving Africa, those who remained behind were breeding with this earlier species and now have between 2 and 19% of their DNA from this source. In other words, as a white European, Perhaps 2 or 3% of my DNA comes from the Neanderthals. In the case of a Nigerian, though, from West Africa, he will not have that Neanderthal DNA, but up to a fifth of his DNA will come from the more primitive human species called Homo erectus. It is difficult to see how this situation could fail to have an effect on the human populations concerned. The Neanderthals from which we acquired genes, were a good deal more intelligent and resourceful than was one thought. Homo erectus, on the other hand, made no progress at all for a million years or more, making the same brute tools throughout the whole of that time. In short, Europeans picked up DNA from a population which knew not only how to survive, but was also doing things such as making string and producing glue. Clever and resourceful species. In Africa, after our group had left the continent, and we're talking here perhaps 43, 45,000 years ago, 
about um, you know, five, ten thousand years after Homo sapiens had left Africa and started interbreeding with the Neanderthals, the people there were interbreeding with this earlier species which had not progressed for a million years. I wonder if these two very different histories of the populations of Europe and Africa might have any implications for the relative achievements of both groups today. In the description to this video I give one or two references but it's worth uh, viewers looking into the topic themselves in greater detail. The bottom line is that the standard narrative of race being a social construct, which we all know about, has pretty much been blown out of the water by science. We now face a choice of following the science or adhering to the ideology, and I know which course I shall be following.